Hey everyone, so I wanted to quickly update you on how my genetic counseling appointment went this morning. I'm sorry I am completely frustrated because I can't even print out my genetic test results to take even into my cardiologist appointment because my printer is not even working, so I am absolutely flustered and as a result I may not be able to take those in, but I can show them by logging in online if I absolutely have to show them what I have. Uh, my results came back as but it was advised to me that I do show them um, when I go to my cardiologist because it can affect heart stuff so yeah but how did it go it went good um, I don't trust have a lot of faith in doctors at this point but everything that she said did resonate with me um, However, based on clinical signs, meaning non-confirmed non-confirmed anything, nothing has been confirmed through this genetic test. Based on so-called signs that there is the based on so-called signs is that they are leaning towards me having possibly hypermobile type of ehlers danlos syndrome. Um, which would make most sense, again, based on clinical signs, symptoms, history, all that seems to be leaning more towards hypermobile type Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome type 3 of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome rather than the variants that were un unspecified or the variants that were uncertain even in the test result. Now, again, this is not a confirmed diagnosis yet, either, even my test results, because um, as what was explained to me is that they, can't, they um, can either upgrade to pathogenic or downgrade to benign, meaning not disease causing or upgrading to, to pathogenic, meaning that it's causing my problem. Um, however, there is a more of a chance that I will downgrade to benign is what was explained to me. But there is a chance that I can upgrade to pathogenic too. So I'm not going to rule that out either. But um, they're thinking based on my symptoms that it's more the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS type 3. That is my problem. So, um, but, um, I'm not going to rule out these either because they're uncertain significance that hasn't been yet clarified to be benign or not causing my problem. So they're uncertain for a reason, right? Yeah. Anywho. So, yeah. Anyways, I wanted to jump on here and talk more about how my appointment went and what they said to me um, about it. So, yeah. Um, and they asked me, well, I told them basically, I told them everything. I basically laid it on the table that I'm undergoing hearts related stuff, investigation stuff. And they told me to take this into my next cardiologist appointment, which I can't because I can't even print out the dang papers, my dang test results to even physically take in. So I may have to just show them on my phone. I don't know how that's going to go. But that's what it was also advised to me to do because of the chances here as well. Um... To keep on a lookout for that because connective tissue conditions can cause heart related issues as well um so basically that's what i was told is to consider taking my test results into my cardiologist appointment as well or like going over it with them as well um but uh with that being said that's basically how it went um what else was i gonna say So they said the MEV12 gene mostly affects it in men, 
um, the lady, the genetic counselor, proceeded to tell me that it causes intellectual disabilities and whatnot, and I said, yeah, I do have those. She was like, thanks for the additional information. I'm like, I'm sorry because I actually forgot to mention it at my initial appointment and stuff like that. So, with that being said, I don't know. So, um, yeah. Anywho, with that being said, they still think it's leaning towards EDS type 3 that I do have. And I'm honest about it, so, yeah. Um, anyways, with that being said, that's just a little bit of an update and how that all went this morning. Um, I'll keep y'all posted through my cardiology appointment. I'll keep y'all posted with the Ehlers-Danlos in-person evaluation and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs>